You're watching Sun TV, broadcasting to the world from studios in Providenciales, in the beautiful by neutral Texas and Caicos Islands. Sun TV, your source for real news as it happens. Take the concept, bear in red, four, five, red, zero, zero, two. was the sound of high-powered gunfire from the British warship HMS Lancaster, which was recently in the Turks and Caicos Islands. I'm Ibor Brew, and thanks for watching Sun TV News. While what you just saw was only a demonstration for the local media when the ship was anchored off Providenciales last week, it is one of the many capabilities which the ship has. The ship, which is known as the Queen's Frigates, and which will be the Caribbean region over the next six months, is here to look after the general security and well-being of the British overseas territories. Commander Steve Morehouse, who took the media on board last Friday, explains the role and function of the warship, which is one of the 19 British frigates and destroyers that are deployed around the world. Yeah, we're here for the next six months, uh, primarily to provide secure uh, support and security to the overseas territories. Uh, clearly we'll be here during the hurricane season, uh, I, I hope that you, know, you don't need our help and assistance but if you should you need it uh, we're here and on standby uh, together with the fleet auxiliary vessel uh, to come and, and lend support. We'll be working closely with the Americans and other nations around uh, for counter narcotics patrols and just ensuring that the seas of the Caribbean are safe. General security and well-being, so that's anything that's illegal on the high seas. Uh, that can be from anything from counter narcotics, uh, weapons, people, uh, you name it. You know, it's the general good order and discipline on the high seas is, is what the Royal Navy is about and specifically here for the, for the overseas territories. Because the waters surrounding Providenciales are so shallow, the Lancaster, which is 133 meters long, had to anchor in the deep waters off the island. However, Commander Morehouse said that in the event of a hurricane or disaster in Providenciales, it would not be a problem getting supplies to the island. A helicopter would be there to help you. I've got some small boats on board as well, as uh, motor boats that we can put people and stores uh, on board. So slowly but sure we'll get, we'll get people and equipment ashore to provide the best possible support that we can to you. We have, uh, we have a number of stores on board that we can take ashore to support. Uh, uh, temporary accommodation, fresh water, uh, uh, provisions. I've also got a huge number of manpower that we can put ashore uh, to help just in that initial search and rescue, some medical care, uh, and just providing that initial first aid support in the 24, 48 hours after a hurricane's hit before the other disaster agencies from around the world can, can get into the island. While in the TCI, the commander took acting Governor Honorable Anya Williams on an aerial tour to determine the weak points that are in the island so that they know where the helicopters will have to land in the event of a disaster. Really just so that they can uh, explain to us where the weak points are on the island, where traditionally hurricanes have had the biggest impact, such that if we are called back, we've got a good feel for where we're likely to be needed straight away. The, uh, the helicopter can get a feel for where it may have to land. Uh, it probably won't be the airport, it'll be a field somewhere. So the better understanding we have of the island, then the quicker the support we can offer uh, in the event of a hurricane. Well, I mean, clearly all the islands are different. Uh, from what we've found so far in Turks and Caicos, it's a very low-lying island, so water and flooding can be really uh, quite a problem and the airfield may be out of use. So it's that sort of assessment we make and how we would support the fire brigade, the police services, uh, and just working out how it is that we'd most effectively bring Lancaster's capability to bear. When asked what goes into the running of such a huge ship, here's what Commander Morehouse had to say. We're very much like a small village, so I've got engineers, uh, people cooking meals, uh, washing, uh, fighting the ship, weapons, sensors, radars, navigators. So we've got a huge array of different skills, all living within 130 meters on board, so uh, a little village. This is Sun TV, real news as it happens. We'll be right back. Life moves fast. It's extraordinary what you can see when you take a second look. Capture the extraordinary around you with Digicel's 4G mobile internet. 
Share the moment instantly with our super fast speeds on your mobile device. The internet as it was meant to be. Only with Digicel 4G. Digicel. Be extraordinary. At a time when there is range and debate about locals taking their rightful place in the senior management of tourism sector, a foreign hotel owner has appointed a belonger to run his hotel. Dave Popke, owner of Ports of Call Hotel, which was formerly Comfort Suites, recently promoted Kendra Parker to manage the hotel which is located in Grace Bay Providencialis. In an exclusive interview with Sun TV, Popke, who bought the hotel in June 2011, was full of praise for Parker. Here's what he had to say. Kendra uh, has been just a blessing from the day she's pleasant to deal with. Um, not having a strong hotel background when I purchased the hotel, I kept on with the tradition of having a, a GM. Um, but uh, the more I got to know both the island and the hotel industry, um, this hotel needs more of what I refer to as a manager. A manager that goes out and talks to the people, walks around the grounds, checking that it's clean, checking that the guests are having a good time, uh, checking that the, the staff are happy and motivated. And Canada is very good at that. Typically, a GM is more of a, a, an office person that is taking care of the strata fees, doing the long-term budgeting, booking, dealing with the lawyers, dealing with the accountants, doing with the marketing. We handle a lot of that off-island. So really what we need is a manager on site. So when we uh, changed manage a manager here a few weeks ago, um, I looked no further than Kendra and realized that it would be the only proper thing to do is first of all, give an islander the opportunity, but second of all, she was really the only person that was uh, capable of taking over the position. And uh, it's only been a few weeks now, but she certainly uh, shone and risen to the uh, occasion, and we're, we're super happy with her. And it's just uh, the rest of the staff seem to have responded. They seem to be happy that that they've got an Islander, uh, one, you know, running the place, and she can certainly relate to them better than than uh, you know an, um, an import could say. I think she can relate and discuss with them, make them happier, understand their needs a little bit better. Kendra Parker, who said she is very excited about her new role, noted that the hotel has tremendous potential and she is eager and willing to help maximize it. Once you're working in an establishment, you, you look forward to growth and development. And um, I, didn't f I didn't really uh, um, see this happening at this time, but of course, I mean, you want to elevate to, to, to that um, position. And I am really excited about the challenge and I'm um, ready to take on the challenge. And with the support, which I know that I'll get from the, from the team as well as the owners, I think um, we'll do very well here at the resort. I'm just excited. I've worked with Comfort Suites at the time, 15 years ago um, upon opening, um, work under Mr. Jules Fletcher um, for two years and I moved on. I was offered the position back here at Ports of Call Resort under Mr. Eugene Burns um, as the general manager. And uh, shortly after, Mr. Dale Papke purchased the, the property. And, you know, it was, I was excited at the beginning to, to see that somebody had a vision, a great vision, because the property is it's in the prime of the island. Um, it's in a great location, and I mean, who didn't see this? You know, was like dead, and it was. I was really excited when he came with fresh ideas um, and wanting to invest into the hotel and brought it to to this level. And uh, Mr. Papke, I do say thank you for. Um, well, you helped me. <laughs> well. We're all, we're all in this together, and I think teamwork um, shows great um, unity. Um, in 2009, I came on as the front office manager, and I worked really closely with um, um, Mr. David Crofts um, after he placed on as, um, he came on as the general manager for Mr. Dale Papke. And um, I was in charge of the front office, as well as assisting with, with the accounting part of it, receivables. Um, of course, um, 
you you starting from down from uh, from a front office manager um, to now the manager um, it's a really um, it's a great experience it's short it, it's only been a couple of weeks but um, I'm looking forward to many years mr. Papke Meantime, the Canadian-born Popkey explained how he got to purchase the former Comfort Suites Hotel. In fact, he explained that it was just a fluke that he came across the property. I, I first came to the island five years ago because one of the businesses that I operate in Canada builds commercial swimming pools. So we, in, we uh, manufactured a uh, pool, a therapeutic pool that was installed in the hospital here. So they brought me down to... Uh, give them some consultation on the installation and at the same time I uh, secured the contract to finish off the pool at the atrium so I sent a couple guys down and we finished off the pool at the atrium so that was um, really my introduction to the island but um, I really uh, started out to look for purchasing a um, leisure home in Florida on a whim decided to get into the uh, buy a small little hotel I, I made a couple of offers on things in Florida and it was really just a fluke in searching the internet that I came across this property I was aware of the island I was aware of its potential in the fact that it, that a large runway was being built um, I felt that that I was buying at the bottom of the market in 2011 I felt that things were going to start coming back together but I Quite obviously, the English language, the American dollar, the friendliness of the people. Um, I remember the first time I, I came to, and I, I um, was on island and I would walk around and people, locals would come up to me and ask me if I was enjoying the island and having a good time. And it's just a good feeling. The people, you feel really, really safe and comfortable here. So I actually um, made my decision to when this opportunity came up to uh, purchase this hotel. When I came down here and I looked at the hotel, I realized that a transformation was needed. This had been originally built as a businessmen's hotel, a, a place where divers could stay, and it really flourished when there was little competition on the island, and also while they were building all the other condo resorts on the island, uh, this is where a lot of the construction workers, the salespeople would stay. Unfortunately, when the uh, recession hit and the construction stopped, and now there was, it was faced with a lot of um, competition on the beach, suddenly the occupancy dropped. And this hotel was running uh, at less than half of what it should be running at uh, when we purchased it. Uh, my vision was to market it as a uh, off-beach resort. So we installed a hot tub, we installed a fitness room, we put a little bit more life into it. We invested $3 million in upgrading the rooms. Uh, he also gave the reason why he changed the name from Comfort Suites to Port Call Hotel. Um, we changed the name. We felt that the Comfort Suites brand would not be, was, was a businessman's brand in the USA. It was not really some place that uh, couples, you know, husband isn't going to go home at night and say, oh, by the way, honey, I'm going to take you to a nice romantic trip to a very beautiful expensive island in the Turks and Caicos but we're staying at the Comfort Suites. We, I felt that uh, coming up with a new name and merging the plaza with the hotel then I could brand the fact that suddenly we have three bars and restaurants, we have a dive shop, we have an ice cream shop, we have a spa, okay, um, we have a hair salon. Uh, it all goes together with the marketing. We, uh, we bought a, uh, purchased a eight person golf cart that we can run our guests back and forth to our beach. We put a beach attendant on the beach so we can uh, keep the, the chaise lounges clean and can sort them out and uh, run people back and forth and run drinks down to them if they necessary. And we've just created a little bit more of a jovial atmosphere, a little bit more of a resort atmosphere. But we're considerably less money than the beach. And really, from people walking from our front door to the beach, which is about a three minute walk, or taking a one minute uh, golf cart shuttle bus ride, we're probably as close to the beach as some of the units located in some of the, 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 the larger beachfront properties. This is Sun TV, real news as it happens. We'll be right back. Life moves fast. It's extraordinary what you can see when you take a second look. 
Capture the extraordinary around you with Digicel's 4G mobile internet. Share the moment instantly with our super fast speeds on your mobile device. The internet as it was meant to be. Only with Digicel 4G. Digicel. Be extraordinary. The Ports of Coa Plaza has long been a favorite spot for tourists. Popke said the shopping plaza continues to be a success and he had some very positive words for the shop owners. We, we have our, our tenants of the plaza are, are, are made to feel welcome to come and use our pool facilities, to use our gym. Um, you know, if they want to come and grab a coffee or pastry in the morning for our breakfast, they're, they're part of our team. Uh, we promote our plaza tenants to our guests and our plaza tenants give, give our hotel guests a small discount. So it's, it's really a win-win for everybody. And I, I believe we've probably got the highest occupancy rates right now in the whole island. Our, we're, we're, I think we've got one unit uh, of our, of our uh, 18 that we need um, filled. And it's, um, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been successful. We've, we fixed it up. We brought in the pirates. The pirates are a great attraction because people come down to take pictures with their, their, their spouses or their children, their families. And of course, while they're here taking pictures, they go and they spend money at the shops. While the Ports of Gold Hotel has been doing well since Popke took over, he intends to market the property more aggressively in order to increase occupancy. Marketing, uh, where we're finding a lot of success is people that come to the island, they love the island, they're staying in a more expensive resort, and they say to themselves, let's check out what else is available here on a second trip. So we get a lot of people coming to our resort on their second or third trip to the island, and then we're fortunate enough in the fact that they stay time and time, they keep repeating and come back time and time again, because we really do believe that we offer the best, you know, the best value for um, on the island. We have complimentary breakfast. As I said, we have every amenity now. We installed a pool table, a ping pong table. We have bingo games on in the afternoons. You know, we have a manager's cocktail party. We have a beautiful gym here. So we have all the amenities of, uh, of the larger, more expensive resorts. Okay. And uh, I think our gardens here, they uh, are very, they're, they're, they're very lush and they're very beautiful. So no, we're not on the beach, but we think we got a lot of other pluses. I'm Ibarra Leobru, and thanks for watching Sun TV News. Join us again tomorrow when we bring you real news as it happens, directly to your computer or mobile device.